Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Hey there, so glad you're here with me today. My name is David Ruzica. I am a Lifestyles member. I'm a real estate investor. I also do the free workshops for Lifestyles Unlimited. And glad you are with me this afternoon. I want to make good use of your time. Uh, Going to talk about a couple of things today. First of all, big news on Monday. I know there's big news all week long, and especially the last 48 hours or so. But the big news on Monday was that uh, Donald Trump only paid $750 in taxes. And that's in the news. And if you're considering, considering becoming a real estate investor or you are a real estate investor, you need to have at least a small understanding of this subject because it will impact your ability to achieve financial freedom. So I want to hit on that first. And then I want to talk about how to build wealth during a crisis, because we certainly had a few crises over the last, uh, boy, even six months or so. And so we're going to hit both of those things. I'm going to give you some really great information how to build wealth during a crisis. But number one, New York Times on Monday, Donald Trump only paid $750 in taxes. Oh, no, I'm having heart palpitations. Brian Stelter of CNN said it was one of the most important stories of the last five years. (laughs) I'm sure his mom told him a million times not to exaggerate. Uh, That's just crazy. Uh, you remember back in 2000, first of all, I, I, I didn't know, realize that was news because I know in 2016, during the debate, Hillary said to Trump, during one of the debates, you paid no taxes. He famously answered, that's because I'm smart. He's a real estate investor. I know maybe people think it's unconscionable that he doesn't pay more in taxes. A good friend of mine, a guy I have a lot of respect for, put on Facebook, can you love your country and not pay taxes? couple of things that you need to know that I want you to know. First of all, uh, I think it's worth noting just his Trump's net worth has fallen over 30 percent since announcing for president, and he's donated 100 percent of his salary as president. But more importantly, on the tax issue, almost half of all Americans pay no income tax at all, 44.7 percent. Uh, Thirdly, as much as people are squealing about him paying no taxes, I've yet to meet in my life a single individual who intentionally pays more than they are legally bound to pay. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates both say they should pay more in taxes. Gates said in 2018 he needs to pay more in taxes. I can't find any information that anyone has ever paid more taxes than they owe. I, I mean, I looked. I looked and I looked and I looked. I mean, if I need to eat, you know what I do? I eat. If Bill Gates needs to pay more in taxes, I think he should pay more in taxes. I think that's great. But please don't try to make me do that. Everyone tries to pay less in taxes. I think it's a civic duty. Uh, government squanders billions every year, and I think you should take advantage of the tax laws. And it's called following the law. It is law and order. And with Lifestyles Unlimited, we do teach you how to legally and conservatively Reduce the amount of taxes you own by investing in passive income from real estate. Because as a passive income, in, as a passive investor in real estate, as a real estate investor, you'll be in the lowest for-profit tax group in the United States. Trump followed the law. Biden avoided paying any Social Security and Medicare taxes on ten million dollars of income in 2017. He was following the law. Why does that matter? Because this is really important for you. Retirement is when you have enough passive income to meet or exceed your bills. That's the goal. John Templeton, famous, famous investor, talk a little bit more about him later. He said, for all long-term investors, there is one objective, maximum total real return after taxes. Here's the thing. If you're not paying taxes on some of your income, it takes a lot less income to pay your expenses, to replace your earned income. You're a lot closer to retirement than you think. Let me give you an example. Real estate. You have a single family home. It's, uh, let's say it's a $135,000 house, or let's say you have $100,000 of income. That's $8,333 a month. As a real estate investor in a single family home, uh, or as a, if you're, you would need about, we're going to guess 
$75,000 in income to replace. That's only $6,250 a month in passive income, not $8,030, because you're paying income on all that tax. You take the tax out, retirement gets a lot closer. That mountain, that retirement mountain becomes a lot more doable. Real estate, when it is done correctly, is tax-free, which means you don't need to earn as much cash flow as you need in a salary. Why? Because of depreciation. You can depreciate your investment property over 27 and a half years. That's if you have a $135,000 house, single family house, uh, that is $4,900 a year loss on your taxes. You divide $135,000 by 27 and a half. $4,900 a year loss. Now, that is a phantom loss because on average, real estate doubles in value every 20 years. It's not a real loss. I always laugh when I say phantom loss. I talk about that in my in my free workshop for Lifestyles Unlimited. Uh, it's interesting because uh, it's not a real loss. It doesn't appear anywhere in reality. It only goes on your tax return. On that house, you've got $400 a month in passive income. That's your income after PITI, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. That passive income, that is what we call a chunk of income. You're chunking away at your expenses. That could cover your utilities. You just purchased back time. That's $400 a month you don't have to work for. That passive income of $4,800 a year, that is... you have a phantom loss of 4900 a year. No taxes are paid on that income. 100% of your passive income is paying your bills. Now, in addition to that, you've got depreciation recapture. Because when you go to sell that property, the IRS wants to recapture some of that depreciation. Because the property actually appreciated, it didn't depreciate. But with a 1031 exchange... You sell the property. You invest the proceeds into another property. Here's the beauty of that. You don't pay capital gains. You don't pay depreciation recapture. And you continue doing that until the day you die. And then you can pass that property on to your kids at the current value. Hey, when we get back, I'm going to kind of wrap up that conversation. And we're going to get into the meat of... How to invest? How to build wealth during a crisis? Glad you're with me here Saturday. Good to be with you. Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Glad you're with me today. This is David Rizika with Lifestyles Unlimited. You're listening to Lifestyles Unlimited Radio. We were talking before the break about the big news, the shocking news that Donald Trump paid $750 or $40 one or the other, uh, in taxes. And everybody was shocked by that. Brian Stelter said it was the biggest story in five years, which just made me laugh. Um, That's because he's a real estate investor. I was surprised it was news because, as he said in 2016 in the debate with Hillary, Hillary said, well, you didn't pay any taxes. And he said, that's because I'm smart. Uh, We'd like to think we're just as smart as the president. And so we, when doing real estate investing properly, it is done correctly is tax-free because of the depreciation. You can depreciate your uh, property over 27 and a half years, and then you can, when you are ready to sell that, you can even avoid the capital gains taxes by doing what is called a 1031 exchange. You sell the property and immediately invest the proceeds into another property. You don't pay the capital gains tax. You don't pay depreciation recapture, and you can do that until you die. And then you can pass that property on to your kids at the current value, what the current market value is at the time they receive it. And so the way we say, I like to say that at Lifestyles Unlimited is defer, 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 die. Run out of life before you run out of money and leave cash flow for your kids or your cats. 
Why you would ever want to leave cash flow for a cat, I don't know. That's just crazy. But that's the idea. Defer, 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 die. We teach you how to do that at Lifestyles Unlimited through our two-day class. Uh, you can sign up for that anytime and join. We do have our uh, free workshops coming up. If you go to lifestylesunlimited.com, it'll say free workshop right there. I'm one of the workshop presenters, and you can uh, – Join me with that and learn the five ways that uh, the six ways that we run our businesses and the five ways that real estate makes you money. The way you build real wealth is to invest in real estate. The big benefit of that, one of the biggest benefits, is that tax-free aspect of it. You say, what if they get a change? What if they change the law? Well, here's the thing: both Republicans and Democrats invest in real estate, and they write the laws. It is a legislature problem, by the way, not a presidential problem. The legislature writes the laws that allow Trump to pay only seven hundred and forty or fifty dollars in real estate. Nancy Pelosi, your husband, owns two hundred thousand dollars worth of real estate. Do you think Nancy Pelosi is going to let the tax laws change in a way that's going to negatively impact her husband's financial holdings? I don't think so. So, when it comes to taxes, defer, 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 and die. Pass it on to your kids. So if you don't know how to do that, go look up, join me for one of those uh, free workshops, and we'll get a little bit more into that. Now, I told you before the break, I told you at the very beginning, I was going to talk to you about how to invest in a crisis. We've been in a crisis for the last, you could say we're in a crisis in the last couple of days, the last 48 hours, as the president has tested positively for uh, the Wuhan virus, the China virus. And uh, so we certainly pray that he gets well, or that he has no uh that he gets well, that he does well through that and, and does great. Um, also, we had a crisis in terms of one of the biggest, never before in the history of the country has the entire country been shut down. And so what do you do? How do you invest during a crisis? Rule number one, I'm going to give you four rules. Rule number one is discipline, discipline, discipline. I was a stockbroker when I first got out of college in 1986. Great time to become a stockbroker. Here's the thing with the stock market. You only make money in one way if it goes up. If it goes down, you're not making money. When it goes down, usually people panic. In 1987, I had been a stockbroker for a little less than a year. They had what was called Black Monday, October 19th, largest one-day market crash in history. The Dow lost 22.6% of its value in one day. That's amazing. It is also Del Wamsley's birthday. That's what spurred him into real estate investing because he lost a lot of money in that. I had two investors. I had a lot of investors, but I had two specifically that I remember. One had just put $100,000 with a money manager, very disciplined, well thought out money manager, decently balanced portfolio, lost, I think maybe 10% on that one day, 10%. And he called me the next day. He said, sell it. He lost his head and he lost his money. Because when he sold, he locked in those losses. I had another investor. I had just begun talking to him about investing. He did not have any money invested with me. The market plunges, massive losses. He calls me. He says, let's go ahead and get in. Put the money with a money manager. He was up 30% within six months. First guy lost his head. Second guy was disciplined. The thing I love about real estate is it instills some discipline. You can sell a stock in less than a second. It's You can sell, sell an entire portfolio, no matter how big it is, in less than a minute. Sell real estate, it takes a little bit more to do that. You've got to hire, an, you've got to hire an, a real estate, uh, a realtor. You've got to sign contracts, do all those extra things in the way. So there is some built-in discipline. Here's the beauty of discipline. Discipline is how you make money. John Templeton, one of the greatest investors of all time, he began his investing career in 1937. In 1939, everybody was losing their head. Uh, he went out and he bought shares of stocks, only U.S. stocks that were trading below $1 a share. He bought stock in 104 companies. 34 of those companies were in bankruptcy. G Hitler's German army was moving across Europe. Western pessimism was at a high. He went out and bought a stock in 104 companies, 34 in bankruptcy. In the next five years, that portfolio grew for, uh, grew 400%. So he was a, mass, a master investor, gave over a billion dollars to charity in his life, said some really good things. He said this. He said, the time of maximum pessimism is the best time to buy. The time of maximum optimism 
is the best time to sell. When everybody's saying, oh, you should invest, you should buy real estate, you should buy stocks, you should buy everything. When everybody's saying that, you know what that means? It means everybody's already in there. And the only place it can go is down. When everyone says, no, 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 it's horrible, it's horrible, you need to run for the hills, that's the best time to buy because nobody's in the market and they're eventually going to come back. Templeton also, he said, he said, buy when there's blood in the streets. <laughs> Using a euphemism, obviously, there. Don't think he really meant blood in the streets, although maybe so because Hitler was storming across Europe at the time that he uh, made his big splash in the market. As I said, real estate has built-in discipline. Use that for your own benefit. Keep your discipline in place. Uh, there's a famous World War II slogan, actually about the same time, 1939 is when it, was, it came about. It was it, the, the British put out posters, the British government all over uh, Great Britain said, keep calm and carry on. The idea was to encourage folks at the beginning of World War II. When the 2008 economic downturn took place, that phrase became Famous. You probably heard of it. Keep calm and carry on. You can see the. You could buy tea towels. You could buy phone covers, T-shirts. I've actually got two coffee mugs from when my daughter and I went to London. Keep calm and carry on. Maintain discipline. Why? Because here's what's going to happen. The market goes bad. There's a pandemic. Predictions go crazy. You listen to the predictions. You're often going to be wrong. People start losing their heads. Some people lose their heads, other people make their future. Which is it going to be for you? I'm going to tell you more about how to do that on the other side of the break. I'm going to continue and talk how to invest in a crisis. Good information for you. Glad you're with me right now. Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Hey, good afternoon. This is David Rizika with Lifestyles Unlimited. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. I also do the free workshops. They're all live streamed right now, and so you can sign up for one of those, uh, one of our free workshops where we share the six principles that we use to run our business and also the five ways that real estate makes you money. So I would encourage you, if you've not attended one of those, go ahead and take advantage of that. I do offer a special right now. When I joined Lifestyles Unlimited, I paid $740. I would pay that over and over again because it was the most effective financial decision I ever made. Uh, but right now, I will offer you a special when you attend the workshop of $297 for two years. So tremendous. Don't be me. Don't pay $740. Pay $297 for two years. You go to the website, lifestylesunlimited.com, and uh, you can sign up for the workshop there. Before the break, I was talking about our first uh, point on our first bullet on how to invest during a crisis, and it is maintain discipline or uh, keep calm and carry on. And I had just gotten into why should you keep calm and carry on? Why should you maintain discipline? Because what people do is they listen to predictions, and the problem is predictions are often false. And so while some people are losing their heads, other people are making their future. It's your choice. Which do you want to be? Do you want to lose your head, or do you want to make your future? Here are some predictions about the pandemic. First of all, on the negative side, neither the Farmer's Almanac nor astrology predicted the pa pandemic. Now, me, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Astrology did not predict the pandemic, and it won't help you find a date either or date the right person. Crazy stuff. Anyway, false predictions. At the beginning, 500,000 dead in the United Kingdom, 2.2 million dead in the United States. Wrong. Almost every prediction, it seemed like, for the first couple of months about the pandemic was wrong. Secondly, renters won't pay rent. Actually, renters have been paying rent as we've been going through this. Uh, Lifestyles Unlimited members, kind of the broad consensus we're getting across the place, is there are very few cases of people not paying rent. Uh, so... 
That was wrong. The economy won't have a V-shaped recovery. Actually, in June, I heard an individual that I trust very much on the radio. He is an expert in investing, and specifically in investing in real estate. And he was, and he said, the president saying that he's just stupid. That's not going to happen. There's no way we're going to see a V-shaped recovery. We've actually begun to see a V-shaped recovery. So that was wrong. Also, the stock market is done. Sell everything. Go live in the woods. Go off the grid because the stock market's done. Actually, I am up for the year. I have a small IRA, just money I haven't actually taken out and, and uh, put into real estate yet. A little bit left over, kind of. Um, and I'm actually up for the year. And I think that is the case for the market as a whole. Um, so, Predictions false. You listen to the predictions, you're going to get scared, you're going to get panicked. No, no, no. What I want you to do, rule number one, is maintain discipline or keep calm and carry on. So, rule number two. Let me give you a little preface before I tell you what the rule is. Number one, you're not buying in a war zone. You're not buying real estate in a liberal town that lets residents live rent-free like uh, the state of California. You're not buying in Chaz or Chop in Seattle. You want to run from those kind of places. You're not buying on top of Native American grave sites like in Poltergeist where the whole neighborhood gets sucked into the ground. You're buying in decent blue-collar neighborhoods. You're buying in areas where the government is uh, landlord-friendly. So during the crisis, some people say, oh, This is just too scary. I'm going to leave real estate. I'm going to flee to a mutual fund. Get this. If there's something that goes on in the country that's going to destroy your real estate, it's going to destroy all your other investments, too. I mean, when I think when I'm talking about that, I mean, if Godzilla goes on a rampage, oh, I'm going to lose all my real estate. You can lose all your mutual funds, too. If there's a zombie apocalypse, your mutual funds are done. So get some guns. If at least if you have rental real estate, you can go live in your house. Why you can live in one of your rent houses while you flee the zombies. So with all that information about where we're buying and what kind of real estate you're going to be buying, you're going to be buying in conservative areas where you have nice blue collar tenants. You want to, with all that in mind, you want to take the investment that gives you the best chance of retiring in five years or less, or to say it in one succinct way, invest effectively. You want to invest effectively. Oh, so maybe I should be diversified if I'm going to be invest effectively. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett stated that diversification is protection against ignorance. It makes little sense. If you know what you are doing, Buffett amassed a fortune by acquiring massive knowledge about all things finance and about specific companies and industries. And then he took that knowledge and he handpicked his investments. Andrew Carnegie, not Dale Carnegie, actually distant cousin of Andrew Car- of Dale Carnegie, said the way to become rich is to put all your eggs in one basket and then make sure nobody kicks it over. Sam Walton got rich not because he diversified, but because he bought he invested in Walmart, and he did it all over the country. Most people, they say diversification, what that means is if I have a stock that's horrible and I've got one that's excellent, it will average out and I'll have a nice mediocre rate of return, oh, by the way, with no cash flow. Or I'll buy some stocks, and I'll buy some bonds, and I'll buy some gold, and I'll buy some silver because I see those commercials during Fox News, and I'm diversified. No, what is the rule? The rule is to invest in a crisis, invest effectively. Number one, never buy gold. Gold doesn't do anything. It just sits there. It's a rock. It doesn't make you any money. Silver, again, doesn't do anything. It just sits there. It's a rock. It's not. The only reason it's going to go in value is because a lot of crazy people decide to buy it. It's going to go down in value because everybody decides to sell it. With stocks, it's up or it's down. That's it. That's how you make money. You have no other way to make money other than up or down. If the stock market's going up, you're doing well. If the stock market's going down, you're losing. With real estate, if you're a passive investor in apartments, you can be diversified by investing in Houston and San Antonio and Cleveland, Ohio, and on and on. In single family, you can buy in different parts of town. You want to invest effectively. Where do you have the most options to make money? Well, like I said, stocks improve when the price rises. You make money when the price rises. Gold, you make money when the price rises. Bonds, you make money when they pay interest. That's it. With real estate, you've got equity capture. The rule number one is don't lose money. So as soon, the first thing you do, you're buying a piece of real estate, 
You've got ec- equity capture. You've locked in a capital gain. That is protection against losing money. When you buy a piece of property, you're going to make sure you have cash flow. Must have cash flow. Cream. If you know cream, if you know, uh, Wu- I want to say Wuhan. No, Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang crew. Cream means cash rules everything around me. Must have cash flow. Cream. When you invest in a property, you're going to make sure that it has cash flow. So even if the market stagnates, you're making money. Better money than a share of Exxon. Exxon's five-year return is a negative 32%. The dividend was 8% last time I checked with a 45% drop in value. No, no. Cash flow from real estate. So you've locked in your equity capture. You've locked in your cash flow. You're paying the principal down. If everything else goes to hell in a handbasket, your resident is still paying off your market mortgage, reducing what you owe. That can be as much as a 10% return right there. You've got appreciation. Real estate doubles in value on average every 10 to 20 years. Now, that's a three, over 20 years, that's a 3.5% average return per year. But you're leveraging. You're not owning the real estate uh, all cash. You have a loan. So your rate of return on the appreciation could be as much as 35%. Per year, on average. And then you've got the tax advantage. We already talked in the first segment about depreciation. One day I need to do a full hour on how you never pay real estate, never pay taxes on real estate till you die. But the bottom line is up markets, down markets, during a crisis, your best place to be is real estate. I remember my mom told me years ago, she said, when I, when I first became a stockbroker, right, I called, she said, you should sell insurance instead. I said, why? She said, because everybody needs insurance. That's the way it's real estate. Everybody has to have a place to live. When we get back, I'm going to continue on how to invest during a crisis. So hang with me through the break. Glad you're with me right now. Every now and then, when the world flips upside down. And during that time, you have to come up with a decision in your life. How are you going to go through this? How are you going to work your way through this process that has no end? So what do you do? The first thing I need you to understand is that almost every entrepreneur out there makes it big when something bad happens. I tripled my net worth between 2008 and 2010. Ten years straight increase in value. It makes us all look like geniuses when everything goes up for ten years straight. But now we're at the point where we can find out who's good again. And you need to be in there. Because why? Because I tripled my net worth in two years. You can do it too if you know what to do. You need to get into lifestyles right now. Join us for our free live online workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. So glad you're with me on Saturday afternoon. It is a great day. 446, I'm here in Houston, Texas at our Lifestyles Unlimited office on the top floor. Uh, was talking before the break. Get to where I was here now. Got to get back up there. We were talking about how to invest during a crisis. And number one, I said, you got to have discipline. You need to keep your head. If you keep your head, you're going to make money. If you lose your head, you're going to lose your money. Uh, Secondly is invest effectively. And the most effective investment is going to be real estate. Like I said, gold, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. Silver doesn't do anything. You only make money if it goes up because more people want to buy it than don't. With stocks, stock market, again, you only make money in one direction. It's either up or down. Otherwise, you're not making money. Um, Up and down markets, your best place to be is going to be in real estate. So, number one, discipline. Number two, invest effectively. Number three, don't try to time the market. 
time the individual investment. When I was a stockbroker for a few years, just a few years out of college, I uh, always I heard people say, "Always don't try to time the market." If a stock, if a client says sell the stock, you sell it that second. You don't wait an hour because you wait an hour and all of a sudden the stock's gone down five points and you're in big trouble with a client and they don't want to pay. Uh, Famous economist John Kenneth Galbraith said this, kind of a liberal guy. Uh, He said, the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology look respectable. People try to, people tell you, oh, this is going to happen with the economy. That's what's going to happen with the economy. No, no. Don't try to time the market. Time the individual investment. Because here's the truth. I'm not smarter than anyone else. If I had a dollar for everybody who sounds wise and self-assured and makes 100% wrong proclamations all the time as if they're Moses with the Ten Commandments, I'd be rich. I remember I was sitting in it in with a group, and I remember James Comey came out, and he said he wasn't going to indict Hillary. And I'm sitting next to a guy. This is a Christian missionary organization. And one of my fellow board members, very wealthy, very, very smart guy, got a lot of respect for him. He said, that's it. Election's over. Hillary wins. And I remember thinking, you're an idiot. Now, I didn't say Say you're an idiot because it's a Christian group. That would be rude. You can't say things like that. But I really thought that. And I liked him and I wanted to stay friends. But also, I mean, me, I'm just not stupid enough to make pronouncements like that that are as if they're utter truth when I really don't know because I'm not smarter than anyone else or everyone else. Anyone else? Okay, maybe I'm smarter than some people. Let's get that right. <laughs> I might think that something's the case, and I will say that. I remember New York Times, Paul Krugman said, he thinks he's Moses. He said on the night of the 2016 election, there's going to be a global crisis or a global recession with no end in sight. And he never learns. He he, he is wrong almost 100% of the time. He's like a weatherman. Uh, even on the pan- pandemic, Trump said it's going to be a V-shaped recovery. And I heard people in July and June saying, no, it's not. He's stupid. He's wrong. And they were always very, very smug when they said it. And now it looks like it is. So which is it? Which is it? You know what? I don't know. I don't care. What I do know is that by and large, people are paying their rent. So we're good. If you can keep thinking, I'm not smarter than everyone else. If you can get some humility, you can make a ton of money in real estate. So don't try to time the market. Instead, get educated. Learn everything you can. Learn how to analyze individual pieces of real estate. Yes, absolutely learn from people. And then time the investment. You're going to ask some questions. Is there equity capture? If there's not equity capture, I'm not buying it. I mean, I'm looking to double my money. I, 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 if I'm buying a piece of real estate, I want to double my money. In two to three years. If I'm not doing that, I'm probably going to pass on it. I also want cash flow. It's going to pay me good cash flow because if it doesn't have cash flow, that's the big rule. Must have cash flow. Uh, Wu Tang Crew. Is it Wu Tang Crew? Wu Tang, whatever. Wuhan virus. Cream. Cash rules everything around me. Must have cash flow. Is there sustained growth in the area? Or at least is it not in decline? I don't want an area that's like going in the toilet. If it's just a nice, stagnant area but people need to have places to live we're good i said right before the uh, uh right before the break i remember when i became a stockbroker my mom said you should sell real estate why should i sell real estate i mean she said i should sell real estate she said i should sell insurance life insurance and i said why she said because everybody needs life insurance everybody does not need to be in the stock market a lot of people don't have to be and i thought about that and i've remembered that all my life Here's the thing with residential real estate. Here's why you don't need to time the market. You need to time the investment. Because everybody needs a place to live. Everybody has to have a place to live. So I just need to ask the question, is there equity capture? Is there cash flow? Is there sustained growth in the area? Or at least is it not inclined? Does it make sense? Don't try to time the investment. Time, or don't try to time the market. Time the investment. So how to invest in a crisis. Number one, you've got to have discipline. People that lose their heads lose their money. People who stay disciplined make money. Number two, uh, investing and investing, invest effectively. I wanted to say invest the best, but eh, invest best, but that didn't really quite say it right. Invest effectively. Number three, don't try to time the market. Time the individual investment. Number four, get the best information possible. Right now, I will tell you in terms of residential real estate investment, single family and multifamily, 
That's Lifestyles Unlimited. That's not an advertisement. That's the truth. When the crisis started, when the pandemic, when the shutdown came around, every day I was inundated as a member, not because I work at Lifestyles Unlimited, but as a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, I was inundated with constant information. I'm a member of an apartment association in a town where I have a, a small apartment community with a partner. And they're on the ball. They were constantly sending out newsletters, keeping me, keeping me up to date with the local courthouse. If I needed information, I could call them. They would tell me. And that's great. But Lifestyles Unlimited gave me more information than I could ever consume every 24 hours during the shutdown, during the crisis. How to run my business, what I needed to be know about in terms of my uh, single-family investment, my multifamily investment, how are eviction pauses and halts going to affect my business, all of that constantly, constantly updating me. So you want to make sure you're getting the best information possible. I had a rent house years ago. It was a house we had sold. We we were moving to another part of town. We couldn't sell the house. We decided to let some renters live there. Um, It was a miserable experience because I had no information. One of the things we talk about at Lifestyles is you need to surround yourself with successful, like-minded people. I didn't know anybody that did any real estate investing. I had I changed that. I had one buddy that had a couple of rent houses. He didn't really know what he was doing. I had no idea what I was doing. Miserable experience because I didn't have good information. Especially investing during a crisis, you need to have excellent information from a proven source. Lifestyles Unlimited has been around since since uh, nineteen ninety for thirty years, and uh, mentored close to four, fifty thousand people. So, there you go. I said it's not an advertisement. Okay, maybe it's an advertisement. Whatever. You got whatever source of information you have. That's what you want to use. Now, here's the truth. If you do that, if you maintain discipline, you don't go off half cocked. You don't start trying to sell property at dirt prices. You'll do well. Invest effectively. Number two. Number one is discipline. Number two is invest effectively. Number two, don't try to time. Number three, don't try to time the market. Time the individual investment. Number four, get the best information possible. And number five, if you do all of this, you can act instead of react. Start right now. This is an opportunity for you. While everyone else is sitting on the sidelines, you have an opportunity to act. When the world flips upside down, that's when people make money. I mentioned this at the beginning. John Templeton, the time of maximum pessimism is the best time to buy. The time of maximum op- optimism is the best time to sell. He also said, buy when there's blood in the streets. 1939, I mentioned before, bought 104 stocks. Any stock that was below trading below a dollar, massive, ex, uh, uh, massive pessimism in the United States. Hitler's rolling across Europe. He's out buying stocks. He had a 400% increase over the next five years. Del Walmsley, who founded Lifestyles Unlimited, on Del Walmsley, Del Walmsley Radio Show, tripled his net worth in two, that from 2008 to 2010. A time of maximum pessimism. What did he do? He went out and he started buying property and tripled his already sizable net worth. If you do all this, you can act instead of react during a crisis. A crisis is a great time to maintain discipline, evaluate the investments, don't lose your head, and go out and begin making money. Hey, here's the thing. With lifestyles only, real change happens when you raise your stand, standards and you turn a should into a must. I want to encourage you right now. Uh, sign up for one of the workshops come up, up upcoming in the couple next couple of weeks. We've got the next two Tuesday nights. We have a free workshop. Everything's online right now, so it makes it easy for you. You can sit in your pajamas and learn how to invest in real estate. I teach some of those, and I will tell you about the five ways that we real estate makes you money. I'll get more a little bit more into the de- depreciation aspect, which I touched on today. Uh, I'll offer you a special. You can join for two ninety seven for two years. Right now, I pay or when I joined, I paid seven hundred and forty dollars. So you can join for that great price of two ninety seven for two years. Here's the truth: you can't save way your to retirement. You don't have enough time. But with real estate, you can make your way to retirement. Thanks for joining us on the Lifestyles Unlimited Radio Show. Have a great rest of the weekend, and uh, see you on the other side with more real estate investing wisdom and ideas.
The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.